Wall of Sound, we are hanging out with the friendly Caspers, the ghost inside, back in Australia for the very first time since 2020. Lads, one show down on the Parkway Drive Massive Tour. I just want you to explain your experience so far in one word. Huge. Huge. Uh, as Australians would say, mental. Mental, yeah. It's not very often you get to have metalcore in arenas and especially, you know, the Brisbane Entertainment Centre where we're plonked away in one of the side rooms here. Metallica have played here. I Maiden have played here. Now the Ghost Inside have played here. How's that feel? Uh, uh, that's insane, actually. Uh, I Didn't uh, Slipknot, play Slipknot play here? That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, we're just happy to be included. Uh, uh, we feel pretty lucky to, to be asked to do this, and we go so far back with Parkway and newly found friends, um, I prevail. And, yeah, yeah we're just, we just feel grateful and lucky. Yeah, I think that goes to show, like, like how massive Parkway is like in the talks of Metallica, yeah. Slipknot, like those bands, like that, like that they're just another in that echelon. Like that's it's just wild to be to be included on this kind of tour and and be able to uh, yeah. come out and do this. It, has, it, has it given you guys ideas of what you can do with stage production? Because essentially we've got the LED screens for yourselves. I prevail and void of vision, and then obviously Parkway are going all out with their high school, you know, production setup that they've got going on. Does it make you guys think to the future and what you could do to elevate your performance? I don't think anyone in the world can do the, their <laughs> performance. My God. Dude, you saw the night I one, saw, right? Yeah, I saw Dude, you know, it's, it's, it. Is, so it is absolutely insanity. Yeah. I but don't it, think anyone can pull that off. Like It rains on stage. Yeah. It's, 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 it's crazy. It's yeah. Like, it's, tell me, tell me. Tell me a place outside of Melbourne where you can get all seasons in one night on stage, essentially. Uh, Brisbane Entertainment Center. Yeah. Tonight. Yeah. Tonight. tonight yeah. I put that exactly. Show, yeah. Yeah. It, it's crazy. I mean, would love to do something like this one day. I mean, we got a long way to go. You know, we're, we're just kind of getting back up on the horse, so to speak, with touring and performing again. But uh, I mean, yeah, one day I would love to do this. And it's so insane to see our buddies Parkway Drive do this because we've played like dingy, uh, dark basements in Germany with them. You know, we've 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 played some really like small, intimate shows with them. So to see how far they've come all these years later, it's it's, it's awesome, and just love those guys. I think I think Parkway is the only band we've toured with in the history of touring where we've toured the like the major uh, continents. Like we've toured North, yeah. North America, yeah. US toured, and Canada with them. Toured yeah. North America, we've toured Europe, and we toured Australia. Yeah. Like those are like the three like bread and butter like yeah. metalcore bands, and like. We've toured with, they've taken us out on, on some, and, some of them place. multiple times as well. Yeah. yeah. And the fact that people keep rocking up again, obviously it goes to show that there is a market there. People still want you. This is your first time. And I've been trying to figure it out. Is this your first time back in Brisbane since the chasing ghost tour? Is that right? It would have been since the rise of brutality tour. That's, that's right. 2014. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Literally. So let's, that was 2014. And that also was September, October. Yeah. It was 10 years ago. Yeah. Like to the month. Wow, yep. that's crazy. That's insane. Think about. Yeah, I didn't realize that till right now. Yeah, it was it's, a co headline tour with Prom Queen, right? Yeah, almost shit my pants, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if, if, for those who are at Unify, you understand what that is, but we don't need to go back to that part again. <laughs> there, there's an interview. There's an interview on the internet somewhere. You can go track that down. Uh, but enough about that. Let's talk about you guys. Uh, Searching for Solace, the brand new album is out. The reception has been incredible. It's awesome seeing you guys back on stage again. Have you found that you had that pit fitness or that stage fitness in you to get back and play these shows again? Or did it take a bit of time, you know, training yourself to get back on stage to be able to do what you're doing now? I think I think it's been it's been hard for us taking so much time off and then getting back in the swing of things. Like our first shows back, you know, we were the the headlining act like we were had to play like go from nothing for years to here's 18 20 songs you have yeah. to you have to play them all like so the fitness is definitely a part of it and now we're kind of like this is kind of our first real support thing we've done since we've been back we were lucky enough to to our first tour tour was with, with a day to remember and yeah. they let us kind of cherry pick some dates and kind of get in a a, a a bus again and do that and that was fun that, that was incredible but like this is the first time we've been able to be like a support act on a tour and like yeah. we're fully back and it's, I, I, we play what, 10 songs? Yeah. I, I would say to your point, it, even though we've had like the last three and a half months off the set the other night felt kind of like a breeze. Cause we're used to doing like an hour, 10 hour, 15 and we're doing 40 minutes now. So yeah. like it went by fast and it, uh, I feel like 
it wasn't too bad. I don't know about you, but yeah, maybe no, a little bit sore the next day. Yeah, but. yeah. And I, we're at a point in our career, which is crazy to be at, where we have so many records out and, and so many like popular songs on each record that it's mm. like, it was like the first time we've made a set list where we're like, well, we're not going to play this song. <laughs> like, this is, this is crazy. Like, there's been times in the past where it's like, oh, yeah, that song's all right, but like, but that that's on the outside. We can cut it out. And this one, it was like, oh, we only can play 10 songs. Yeah. We have to fit it into a 40 minute set. Like, yeah, we like, well, what do we do? Yeah, we spend a lot of time going, like, well, this one because of that, but we got to do that one. Like, without it, yeah. you know, I mean, we spent a lot of time carefully picking what we were going to play. And it, it's like a, it's an, a, a nice mix too, because there is a lot of people here who are Ghost Inside fans and know Ghost Inside, but the majority of the people, have never seen us you know like have no idea who we are because we've been gone for so long and then um you know parkway has given us a chance to be able to get in front of these people and play to these humongous crowds so we had to do like a balancing act of like where we are now as a band but then still like give our older fans what they want to hear you know so it's like it was like a good balancing act to try to find yeah, the, promoting the new record and fan service yeah pretty yeah much. and i mean you're on stage as well there's you're not here to fuck spiders you're essentially on to play songs there's there's very minimal talking to the crowd yeah, definitely not here to fuck spiders i'll tell you that and and from well, there like did that what he said i didn't know what he said wow fuck okay i didn't you know, know that, i didn't know that was a uh a saying a colloquialism or yeah, whatever it's no called idea, that's yeah. the very first time i've ever been able to pronounce that word too and i'm an australian yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that's that a big one real nice that was real nice work now uh talking about that like you you look out in the crowd and you see all the fans that have wanted to see you haven't seen you in 10 years especially here in queensland again they're bringing their kids along so i think what you're doing is a, a great service to the fans that were already there you're also meeting new potential fans and then you've got a new generation of kids who are seeing the, the ghost inside for the very first time is that a surreal moment to look out and see young kids like rocking the fuck out on their parents shoulders dude i think that's been huge for us like a lot of we've been getting a lot of messages like like even back home and stuff and like on our headline tours and stuff like oh hey like it's our it's my first time seeing you hearing about you like you just gained a new fan yeah. like that's that stuff is huge like looking out in the crowd and seeing like somebody like recognizing faces that we've seen for you know so many years coming here and then yeah seeing their their kid there or seeing a friend or like seeing someone who has no you know light up and like like oh my god like this is amazing like i'm a fan now like that 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 kind of stuff is so like invaluable and that that kind of stuff is really what helps grow a band that's what makes a band you know like do what they do like parkway is on obviously you know like just absolutely crushing it and to be able to play in front of all these people like we we really owe them a lot to be able yeah. to do this kind of stuff and it's 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 you know it's the second show um and we're just excited to be here man yeah. honestly get back out there again to get back on stage to whip through this and then to venture around the country again i know you went and saw the animals again which is you know the one thing you need to do when you get back to australia you're feeding a kangaroo and it's shit in itself like there's a lot of shit going on in this tour yeah, yeah. And, and you know we have a what four or five in our crew that haven't ever been to australia oh, really? and we've been yeah. here so many times we know all the spots that we got to take them to like we have a pretty limited amount of time in tomorrow in sydney but we're hoping we can uh you know get our crew to go see you know the harbor bridge and yeah. the opera house and and all the the staple things you need to see because you know not sure uh like when the next time we're coming back is and yeah. uh just got to be able to to get them to see it you know so yeah, uh yeah. but uh, yeah it, it's it, it's so it's such a familiar place to us it feels like home away from home australia yeah. always has felt like that to us and i mean like when we one of the last times we spoke like people recognizing you at shopping centers when you're an american coming to australia that's a big you know it makes you feel at home kind of i'm thing. big in australia yeah. yeah you are very big down here in more ways than one uh vigil uh when we had the chat about the album i'm still stuck on it it's still probably going to be my top three songs of the year yeah. cityscapes has a very personal Cheers. message and a very personal story involving uh your connection to brisbane when you're back here now for the first time since 2014 and that song is out in the open, people have heard it, you've been able to listen to it on the album again. Does it have a sort of, what's the word I'm trying to say? Do you feel a connection to it when you're back in the city that inspired it? Uh, not, not on stage. I, I didn't feel, feel it on stage, but when I felt it, we are staying kind of down by the wharf, I guess. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, uh, and, uh, and yeah, the... the What's it called? Felon's Wharf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. We, we were staying kind of near there, and and I walked down. I didn't even really pay attention. We walked down to to Felon's to get some some food and stuff, and and actually Andrew was like, like we were chatting, and he goes, he goes, hey, 
He asked me, he goes, look up. And I go, I look, and I just saw the, the Brisbane skyline. Skyline, yeah. And that's the, the image that inspired the theme yeah. of the song. And yeah, that's right. What, that's what just hit me and like brought me back. So that was that was the moment that I was like, whoa, like that. That's when it hit me. Like I thought it would have been, you know, in the hotel or or on maybe even on stage or whatever. But yeah, I, it didn't really kick in until until he was like, hey, dude, like, like look, like look where we are. And I was like, and then it just came like a ton of bricks, and I was just like. I was just, I was just taken back to that, you know, that moment. And it's, it's, it's a sad moment for me, but it's also like, you know, we talked in the last interview. It's also kind of a happy moment for me to know that like, you know, I was making my dad proud and, and the fact that we were on the other side of the world and had people care about what we're doing and, 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 you know, singing our lyrics back and that like that always made him proud. So it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, yin and yang kind of feeling which just goes with the record you know the record is very yin and yang and 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 that was a, a moment for me where it was like happiness and sadness at the same time you know yeah 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 yeah. and it's another you know another pure example of the experiences you go through the way you articulate that in your music and you share that with people people are going to uh relate to this for you know the rest of their lives um I'll tell you a story, an anecdote about this after the interview because it doesn't need to go in the interview. I'm about to tear up again. <laughs> uh, but we'll wrap the interview up with a very, very serious question, okay? The ghosts inside are back and we're going to judge you for your answers on this, okay? It's, this sounds like it's going to be serious. It's going to be very serious. I can already tell. You know what yeah. to expect from me. All right. If you could you live a life, if you could live a life as an infamous or famous ghost throughout history, who would it be and why? I can start off by saying Patrick Swayze from the movie Ghost. Yep. Uh, Does he get close to Demi Moore? Yeah. Still has its perks, but yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, fantastic movie. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he got, to, he got to kick a little ass in there, and it was a very happy, beautiful ending. So yeah. uh, that's, I'll, I'll, I'll say yeah, Patrick, Patrick Swayze Patrick from Swayze. Ghost. Yep, yep, yep. That's a, that's a good answer, and that kind of uh, takes away from me. I think I would do... Um, if a fucking ghost, maybe Slimer from Ghostbusters. <laughs> hey, dude, that's, <laughs> that's a ghost, that's right? That's right, yeah. Just eat whatever the fuck you yeah, want to. Yeah, that's- no. Uh, uh, real answer would probably be uh, no, no, just... That's your real answer. Okay, that's my real answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. with that, that's great. Yeah. If, if <laughs> Slim broke, don't fix it. <laughs> How are you going to top that? I don't know. Well, I was going to say I'd be Bruce Willis from The Sixth Sense because even if I was dead, I'd still go to work. It's just how my brain works and operates. But Respect. Yeah. Respect. This isn't about me. It's about the ghosts inside. They're back in Australia again. Boys, thank you for taking the time out. As always, to chat with Wall of Sound. We love Let's you. Go. Thank Let's you. Go. Thanks for watching, guys.